I think it's time to answer the big question. Am I switching over to the Mac Studio as my daily driver? And what are some of the reasons why I may or may not be doing that? Let's find out. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. The quick answer is yes, I am switching over to the Mac Studio. And because you already have your answer, if you'd like to end the video here, you can. However, I highly encourage you to stay because I'm going to talk about the configuration I got. Is this the ideal one for me or not? What are some of the reasons I'm moving to the Mac Studio, the downside of this machine from my standpoint, and what's going to happen to my Mac Pro once the switch is finished. So let's start out with the configuration for my Mac Studio. And for this, we're going to look at Apple website. There are two standard configurations that Apple has as a recommendation. And a quick tip is if you want to get a machine sooner than later, you're OK with the standard recommendation. You don't need to customize anything. I would check their website on a daily basis because these machines are generally more readily available and the stores generally do get stocks for these machine in. So if you want a machine sooner than later, you can order it as an online pickup and go in store and you can get your machine that much faster. And this leads me to the point and the configuration of this machine. This was a in-store pickup and the one that I got is pretty much the standard configuration for the M1 Ultra. 20 CPU, 48 GPU, 64 gigabyte memory, and one terabyte SSD. Some of you may wonder, is this an ideal configuration for me? And the short answer to this is no, but there are a few reasons behind this. Number one, let's take a look at customizing your Mac Studio first. So the lead time right now to get your machine in, even if you order this standard configuration, is quite a bit. However, if I gone in and, for instance, bump up the memory or bump up the SSD, we're talking about 10 to 12 weeks lead time. I don't want to wait that long so that I can use my machine. I want to use one right away. And this is a one where I can make enough compromises to make this work. Is this ideal for me? No, because I, you know, one terabyte SSD, it's going to fill up really quickly. But nonetheless, it is something that works. Now, Part of this, I blame myself because I didn't go on to the website and pre-order the configuration I want fast enough. But here's the thing, even for someone like me who is really tech savvy about these things, if I have to go and pre-configure a machine like this, not knowing how it performs in the tasks I use on a daily basis, I mean, that was a big risk. These machines are not cheap. Relatively speaking, yes, they're much cheaper than a Mac Pro, but these machines are not cheap. And I don't want to configure something that is not going to work out for my workflow and what I do. And this is also the reason why I do all these videos on my channel with benchmarking in the real world so that you can see as a photographer how these machines perform. I find that helpful for me and I hope that they're helpful for you too. Now, with that being said, the other reason why I've gone with this configuration and this compromise is because I want to see what Apple has to offer in their Mac Pro with Apple Silicon first. So if they release a machine similar to this that has a PCIe card that has Apple Silicon inside and the price is not too bad, this may end up being my unicorn machine where I configure everything that I want. I can put PCIe expansion cards on inside and now I can just move over to the Mac Pro and this machine can either be a diagnostic machine or I can sell it off or something like that, right? So it does give me some more room to maneuver with this configuration right now because I have yet to see what Apple fully has to offer. And this would lead me to talk about the downside for Mac Studio. First impressions are hard to forget. And the one impression I have about the Mac Studio the first time I pull it out of the box is not so much that it is an aluminum block or anything like that. But the moment I power it on, I hear the fan or the wind, whatever you want to call it, the air blowing through the two blowers just coming out from the back of the machine, I do hear that. And it is much louder than the other machines that I've used. For instance, it's even louder than this machine. And this is designed to go under a table, right? So you don't hear as much. This is designed to be on the table. So you're definitely going to hear it that much more. That and I have been testing, for instance, the M1 Mac Mini, which is extremely quiet, even when the fan's running. My 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max, which is extremely quiet and is really hard to push a machine to get the fan to turn on. All the while this, I just power it on and you hear the fan right away. So first impressions are definitely hard to forget. And that's the one thing that I'll call this machine out right now. Hopefully Apple will release a firmware and fix this down the road. We shall see if anything is going to change or not, but chances are, I think this may just be the way how it is at the moment. 
Secondly, inside this really nice form factor, there is no way how you can put in a PCIe expansion. Now, I use PCIe expansion inside my Mac Pro and that's part of the reason why I got this machine is so that I can expand it to do different things. Let's take a look at some of the cards I have inside my Mac Pro and every time I open this up, I wish you get like that soda can, you know, sound effect of just carbonation coming out, but that's not the case. All right, so let's take a look. This is a heavy computer. All right, so inside my Mac Pro, I have installed two PCIe cards and they are both for storage, amazingly enough. Now, I haven't put in any hard drive. Initially, I thought I was gonna do that, but after thinking about it, I want this machine to run silence and putting a hard drive in there is definitely gonna make the machine run that much louder. So I have gone with an all SSD internal storage on the inside, but I have expanded. So one of the card is an older card. This is a card that can take two, two and a quarter SSDs and you can pair them together is using a Marvel ship and this is running in RAID 0. So now I have two terabytes of storage on this card. And on the other one, this is a Sonnet M.2 4x4, which takes NVMe and I have four two terabytes Samsung 970 EVO Plus on the inside. So on these, I set this to a software RAID 0 and I'm getting close to six gigabytes per second read and write on this card, which is absolutely amazing. This is faster than the internal storage, internal two terabyte storage on my Mac Pro. So that's really impressive. Now, the other thing though, is this card, the Marvel one that takes two, two and a quarter SSDs, these generally write and read at around 750 to 800 megabytes per second. Nothing to run home about, but the other one is definitely fast. Now, here's the thing. I like to use these memory or at least one of this PCIe card with my Mac Studio, but because there's no expansion slot on inside, there is a solution around it. And I'm gonna do a separate video just kind of just talking about that in general. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel for that. But yes, no PCIe expansion. And lastly, this has a non-upgradable component, which is kind of like one of those things, it's similar to buying a 2013 Mac Pro, but just a little bit worse, because inside the 2013 Mac Pro, at least the processor, you, it's not soldered to the board. You can go in and upgrade it. You can upgrade the RAM. This is pretty much just the way how you have configured and built it. There's no upgrading components down the road whatsoever. So that's kind of like one of the downside this machine that I see right now. So, Let's talk about some of the positive thing about the Mac Studio. Let me put it this way. The M1 Ultra is genuinely the first silicon that Apple has released in the M1 series that truly blows my mind. All the other ones were good. They're always good in different aspects. For example, the M1 inside the Mac Mini, for instance, is an impressive processor when you compare the price for performance. I mean, it's nudging out the Mac Pro. It doesn't quite beat it out, but the price point though, I mean, at the 10th of Mac Pro price, it's just absolutely amazing what it can do and the power that it has on that ship, along with just the fact that it runs really cool, the fans sign this all the time, it's amazing. The other Apple Silicon that really was interesting to me was the one inside the base 14 inch MacBook Pro. That is the M1 Pro, the one with eight CPU, 14 GPU, that one, the performance is really great. And if you take that machine, for instance, upgrade to 32 gigabytes of memory and maybe one terabyte SSD, Considering all things equal with all the other configuration that you would build their laptop, that machine is a really great contender because you can export a lot of files and it's pretty much almost neck to neck with the other M1 Pros in the lineup. It's just a touch slower, but you're talking about a thousand files in Lightroom. You're taking about a minute to a minute and a half longer and you're saving around two to $300. I mean, that's just absolutely amazing. I have the M1 Max inside my 16 inch MacBook Pro. I mean, M1 Max, I think it's good. It's not, you know, exciting for me. I've tested the M1 Max inside the Mac Studio. It's not, you know, exciting for me. It's just kind of meh. I think it's just one of those things where if you come from another machine or an older Intel, it's going to be really great. But coming from something like this that I already have, I need something more. M1 Ultra truly blows my mind away. And this is definitely something that I want. Now, this machine, it's a third the price of this Mac Pro and it's already beating it out by so much. There's absolutely no reason why I would not get this machine to use on a daily basis. Specifically for the tasks I use this for, Lightroom Classics, this machine is extremely fast, much faster than what my Mac Pro can do. Now, the other thing that's really great about the Mac Studio, and this is not something that a lot of people talk about, is the power consumption. In idle, 
This Mac Studio consumes around, I would probably say 10 to 15 watts at the very most. Most of the time it is around 10. On my Mac Pro, granted I do have a few PCIe cards and I also have a powerful Radeon Pro Vega 2 card in here. This is the one with 32 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory. This machine is consuming around 180 watts on idle. So you're talking about 18 times or 17 times less power than my Mac Pro. Obviously, this is definitely a winner. Now, when I try to process or push the machine hard, for example, doing encoding, exporting these video out, this machine would ramp up the power consumption to around 100 watts. My Mac Pro is generally consuming around 300 watts. So it's consuming two thirds less power and it's also exporting the videos much faster than it can on the Mac Pro. I mean, this to me is a no brainer specifically for my workflow. It makes so much sense. And lastly, because I consult with many software developers, what I want to do is use their software on an Apple Silicon right away, but I want to do this on a daily basis, meaning that it is my daily driver. So in a long-term testing, if an issue should come up because of the immersion, because I'm using it every day, I want to be able to identify those rather than just launching a machine, run the test, and you won't get to see a lot of conflicts that come up. So that's another thing that is important for me. Now, there are a few things that could have been totally a deal breaker for me. For instance, being able to do a hardware calibration on my BenQ SMU, super important. Now, initially when I tested this, I was so focused on the latest release, 1.3.17, which doesn't work on the Mac Studio yet. So here's the thing, I was kind of disappointed and if I have to go to software calibration, that would be definitely a deal breaker for me. But someone on my comment in the YouTube pointed out that, hey, by the way, 1.3.15 works. And thank you so much for pointing it out because I was so focused on just testing 1.3.17 that I didn't even think to go back. So yeah, 1.3.15 works to calibrate BenQ SMU displays. Uh, using Palette Master Element in Mac Studio, I am set and ready to go. And lastly, there's one more thing. What's going to happen to this machine? Well, I'll take the cards out, obviously. The card's going to go somewhere. I'll share that with you in another video. And pretty much this machine will probably go on the auction block as a secondhand use machine because someone can probably still use this machine, but I don't see any point keeping this machine anymore. I just want to move forward with Apple Silicon. Anyway, I hope that you find this video helpful and just you know, my reasons behind choosing the Mac Studio, what are some of the downsides to it, and all the other things that comes with moving over to this little tiny platform. Anyway, hope you find this useful. Have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, hit the bell if you're new, and in our trust. <laughs>